Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another tournament online. It's just crazy how many tournaments we have. A chest speed championship didn't finish yet because we have a lot of days off because that's a tournament for, for a couple of weeks. And this is why Magnus Carlsen organized Skilling Open. Skilling Open is the part of the Champions Chess Tour. So another tour organized by Magnus Carlsen and Magnus um, is proud to announce my partnership with Skilling Scandinavian multi-asset trading platform. That's Magnus Carlsen tweet. Uh, and now who's gonna play? So as you already see, Magnus Carlsen I'm definitely gonna play. We have also Ding Liren, we have Nepo, MVL, Levon Aronian, Wesley So, Teymur Rajabov and Anish Giri and also Sergei Karyakin, uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda, Vidit Gujarati, Peter Svidler, Liam Kwangle and David Anton, uh, plus Alireza Firuzia and Hikaru Nakamura agreed to play in these tournaments as well. Um, that they, they were last two players um, who got invited. 16 great players, one of the best players um, on our planet. And first, I would like to show you the game between Magnus Carlsen, that was the first game, and his great rival Jan Nepomniasi. They were rivals for from very, very beginning of their chess career and uh, Jan Nepomniasi uh, never scared to play against Magnus Carlsen. Uh, he is very confident. He won a lot of games, but Magnus Carlsen still is the world champion. So without further ado, let's see what happened uh, in this first game. This is the rapid time control. Just for your information, we have e4 by Nepo, e5, knight f3, knight c6 and bishop b5. So Rui Lopez on the board. A six of course the most popular Morty, Morphe defense asking the bishop what you gonna do here buddy you gonna go to a4 maybe you gonna exchange so um, that's of course your choice uh, also knight f6 favorite um, of Magnus Carlsen Berlin defense however this time he went for knight g2 e7 we've seen couple of times that he played with the system of the of the g6 bishop g7 so sometimes Magnus Carlsen goes for the, for this way however after knight c6 this time he goes for knight g6 so this is quite the sideline of this uh, sideline and um, of course the this is called Cozio defense and it's pretty much not really um, explored yet I mean it's not very popular for the reason it's not that great for black we have d4 attacking the center, e takes on d4, knight takes on d4 and now uh, usually what players play is knight d4 and after queen d4 there is a little problem because the queen actually is watching at g7 and without the, the knight on, on f6 uh, that can be actually problematic, the bishop cannot move uh, so usually what, what is happening is c6, bishop e2, this bishop uh, in this opening usually uh, do really great job on e2 uh, and then queen Queen b6 asking the queen to uh, to exchange and only after the the queen move for example to d3 uh, then the bishop can be developed and black can castle so that's the main idea however Magnus um, moves the bishop to c5 attacking the knight so the knight is attacked twice and and white have to do something about that we have bishop e3 now defending uh, and here Magnus said okay I'm gonna exchange my uh, dark square bishop for your knight bishop d4 we have bishop d4 and now queen g5 already asking okay what you gonna do because um, i'm already pointing in g2 you want to castle immediately that's gonna be pretty much risky so this is why we have g3 by, by nepo uh, and only now after knight d4 queen d4 and knight e5 so the queen also controls e5 and we have the first very serious threat attacking the uh, potentially attacking the, the king and the queen. So this is why bishop retreat to e2, the favorite um, square for the bishop in this opening. Uh, and now knight c6 kicking the queen. We have queen c4 and now d6 opening the diagonal for light square bishop. Uh, we have knight d5 now attacking c7. So the queen uh, has, has to retreat queen d8. Uh, and now we have queen c3 putting the pressure on the g7 but of course um, black can castle also nepo castle on the queen side as the light square um, in front of of his king uh, aren't that great and also that indi indicates that nepo actually gonna play some maybe sharp chess uh, because definitely white would like to uh, 
attack on the king side at the same time uh, black still have this um, this knight on c6 so the attack on the on the queen side can be much slower we have rook e8 now attacking the pawn on e4 f3 defending and now bishop e3 asking maybe i'm gonna uh, take your um, your knight and uh, we have bishop b5 now pinning this knight uh, and here just uh, for your information it's it's not big deal this knight actually can be taken because uh, yes the knight actually is pinned but there is still a6 move um, and if the knight moves to them to the a4 we're gonna have something like b5 uh, these are pretty well known structures also if the if the knight is taken then black gonna have the attack on the on the a file so for example c takes on b7 rook a2 and the game you know is still pretty much complicated uh, but very much playable as well bishop d7 was played by magnus carlsen so magnus just unpinned said okay i don't want to any tricks here we have h4 um, and here a6 asking what you're gonna do with the bishop and here is the moment where nepo actually should go with this bishop to e2 and that's really great square in this opening for the bishop uh, for example bishop e6 this is what magnus wanted to play uh, and then for example knight f4 uh, already attacking this bishop maybe queen d7 just to um, defend to don't uh, you know shatter them the pawn structure in the front of the king uh, that was possible however we have bishop a4 not really precise move by nepo it's not like losing however magnus now uh, starts to get the initiative but how to do that First, we have b5, so bishop b3, and now continue the attack, a5. So definitely a4 is the threat, then the bishop would be uh, actually uh, trapped. So this is why we have a3, making a space for the bishop. And now, instead of playing a4, of course, we have b4. But b4 means that Magnus Carlsen actually sacrificed the pawn for that initiative. Now, um, we have, of course, a takes on b4, uh, Nepo accept, a takes on b4, knight b4, before, night before queen before so what just happened uh, Magnus has the rook the open file for the rook and quite a dangerous attack potentially uh, on the king for now the king can just simply go to d2 and there is no continuation it's very difficult to actually imagine uh, how to bring the queen to the game so for example the queen could go maybe this way uh, or maybe this way uh, but here actually uh, the queen controls uh, b8 so it's not that easy uh, so probably this way but it's too slow of course it would be too slow so because the queen still controls the dark square so there is no problem here so first we have bishop e6 uh, magnus wants to exchange them the bishops and uh, nepo agrees so we have bishop e6 rook e6 and now queen c3 still staying with the queen on the uh, on the c3 so potentially defending e3 as other dark squares here actually uh, are, are defended by the queen so as i said the queen would have to make a, a quite a lot of moves that would be too slow the queen still in 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 the control and also preparing b3 and controlling at the same time a1 so that's a pretty much defensive move and first magnus play h5 so making a space for the king uh, because with the major pieces uh, sometimes you know it can uh, happen that the the eighth rank is compromised and that uh, can be losing so uh, this move is is of course uh, pretty common we have b3 now so making a space for the queen to defend uh, and now rook g6 so starting to uh, targeting some pawns and now white have to uh, react somehow so we have f4 defending it this way we have rook a6 now probably preparing the the move queen a8 maybe with the attack on the pawn and at the same time uh, with some attacking chances on the on the queen side uh, we have king b2 now making a space potentially for the rook and now of course magnus would have to uh, check what would happen if queen a8 it looks very natural however after rook e1 and, and let's say rook e1 uh, rook a1 and queen e4 yes he wins this pawn but then of course white gonna win uh, c7 uh, and then all the pawns would just collapse so for example rook g3 then queen d8 and um, queen d6 uh, and let's say rook g2 
but then white also get a lot of initiative here queen c5 defending here attacking also on them on the h5 and uh, it's not so easy actually for black so not really attractive line for black this is why magnus is still waiting and trying his chance in the center we have rook e6 um, and now actually for white this pawn definitely is a weakness but e5 solves all the problems the point is that this pawn even cannot be taken because it's pinned the queen is just behind so queen would have to move and then after exchanging uh, let's say rook e to d6 and after exchanging everything at uh, this position is pretty much better for white one extra pawn uh, should be should be enough uh, maybe not for winning not always uh, however definitely very comfortable game for white but Nepo didn't find the e5 move so attractive and instead he played queen c4. Now queen c4 of course defending e4, also attacking the rook, so it looks pretty much solid. However, at the same time uh, it's exposing this diagonal. So Magnus jumps with the queen, queen f6, and now white have to be very careful. For example, king b1, this would be the, the checkmate on a1, so uh, white have to be extremely careful. There are a couple of combinations here. This is why we have c c3. Uh, and now as the rook is under attack so we have rook a8 uh, and here you would ask okay queen c7 looks pretty good uh, we're gonna win the pawn we're gonna create the past pawn that's true however black also have some counterplay very active boom rook e4 and now this rook also gonna get to the second rank which can be very dangerous so probably rook h to e1 uh, and after queen e6 just exchanging couple of um, pieces and then even white gonna win Win another pawn and you know it's almost almost winning black still have very dangerous attack queen g2 let's say rook d2 uh, then queen g1 and we are gonna have very very dangerous attack according to the engine this is just a draw black gonna deliver some perpetual check and white have to be uh, extremely careful not to not get checkmated so it's 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 very very complex position and very difficult to play actually um, as white so magnus goes a lot of a ton of initiative here this time Nepo of course doesn't like this continuation as well so this is why first we have rook h to e1 defending the pawn uh, and now queen e7 now also Magnus gonna defend the c7 and also putting a lot of pressure on the e4 for now is defended however for example uh, d5 can be played so d5 is the very very serious uh, threat of course the pawn couldn't be taken because um, the rook on e1 is hanging so here is the problem so what why should play in this position uh, one of the best moves in the position there are a couple of them uh, because white still doing pretty good is queen c6 now still focusing on some on some rook so rook a8 at the same time actually uh, looking at the d5 so very very solid move uh, for example rook e8 and now white can um, just choose what to play can play even something like rook d4 for now just the defend this this pawn uh, and now there is no problem Problem, for example after d5 uh, simply queen d5 and and that's all so there is no problem with d5 anymore however here Nepo went for rook d5 so what Nepo want to do is just block the pawn uh, but this move is actually losing black have a winning continuation so find how Magnus can win this game while I enjoy my cup of tea Okay, ready? So the winning move which Magnus spotted immediately was actually c6 uh, and he played that uh, and now if the rook gonna move then of course we gonna have d5 so pretty pretty obvious continuation d5 was the threat and now it's gonna even be stronger because supported by the pawn. But you could say also, okay, uh, but but this pawn actually can be taken. Uh, not really, because after queen c6, black have queen a7, and now the king is in the troubles. There are no rook a1, this one, and so on. The engine recommends rook d2, but it's also losing. Immediately d5, so queen d5, and then queen a2. Uh, king c1, queen a1, now king c2, and now rook a2. A king d3 escaping but now we're gonna have queen e1 exchanging the rooks this rook is now unprotected uh, and now 
queen b1 forking the the king and the rook so a rook of course c2 but now we're gonna have rook g6 winning this pawn uh, and then winning the rook for example this way uh, if white tries to actually unpin so king d2 then rook g3 still we have a very serious threat so for example e5 but then there we have another winning move a uh, queen f1 and now the rook gonna come to the g2 and the rook gonna be lost as the queen control uh, all the squares around here so uh, it's not possible to defend the, the rook anymore that's the problem uh, of course there are some uh, mating ideas here uh, so yeah why why are, are actually lost here uh, also rook e to d1 it looks pretty solid connecting the rooks however now we're gonna have queen a2 uh, king c1 now of course d5 is not possible uh, but rook e4 is possible uh, and for example rook d6 trying to be active exchange as many pieces as possible but it's all too slow queen a1 king c2 rook a2 now attacking from another flank as i said the second rank is exposed uh so for example rook c to d2 looks uh, looks okay but now we're gonna have rook a2 king d3 now we're gonna exchange one of the rooks rook d2 and now queen f1 is winning and now the king has not many squares to go king e3 otherwise of course the, the rook is under attack uh, but still we have queen e1 king f3 this can be tricky because uh, for example this rook cannot be taken yet because after rook d2 we would have of course queen c8 perpetual check that would be the draw that would be of course the draw and uh, if this pawn is moved then of course uh, this is also a draw perpetual check this way or another so uh, this is not the winning continuation the winning continuation actually is i hope you see that already queen h1 boom very nice skewer and uh, black gonna win the queen if the rook is going to to g2 then also the rook so of co completely winning for black so as you see nepo uh fall into tot completely lost position he moved the rook d4 and now magnus just played boom d5 and look how Nepo watch at this position. This is the video. So <laughs> this is how Nepo actually react. So as you see, this is completely lost position and he just can resign. So now why this move is so dangerous? Because it's opening the diagonal now uh, for the queen. So there is no even time to defend. Uh, even queen a7, as you already see, was, was very dangerous. But now the queen gonna be even faster. We have the attack on the, on the queen. Uh, and now we have queen a3 also exposed uh, but nepo didn't uh, resign yet he wanted to play a couple of moves because uh, maybe something gonna happen so we have queen e2 queen a3 of course and nepo is in completely lost position king c2 we have queen a2 king d3 queen b3 we have a queen c2 trying to exchange and here Magnus wanted to just move the queen to b5 and he started to pull his queen and then he dropped it on b4. So definitely a mouse slip and in this position Magnus Carlsen resigned. He gonna lose the queen uh, and the game. So what he wanted to play is queen b3 and after the king move for example e3 then rook a3 more pressure here. Uh, if Nepo want to the hide the king maybe um, somewhere go to the safety. The problem is now queen a5 uh, attacking this pawn. Also there are another ideas here uh, attacking the queen even with the, with the king on f3 doesn't really matter because then uh, black gonna uh, actually deliver a check with the with the tempo so it doesn't really matter uh, and, uh, and yeah that would be completely lost but Nepo uh, didn't resign yet and this is what happened uh, one point for Nepo and a huge drama for Magnus Carlsen so um, that was the first game um, and today we're gonna have them the second day so I'm gonna show you uh, one or two an another games and then I'm gonna show you uh, also the standings how how it's going so if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it uh, press and like and if you don't want to miss other games from the skilling open uh, 2020 tournament press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one